from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Thursday, November the 10th, 2016. A Palestinian man was arrested today after he threw a Molotov cocktail at IDF soldiers in the West Bank. The Israeli troops were on guard in the town of Birzeit outside of Ramallah when the man hurled the firebomb at them. The troops responded and shot the man in the leg. He received medical attention at the scene and was taken into custody. No IDF soldiers were hurt. And in Jerusalem today, an Arab-Israeli man was arrested after he was found carrying a knife. Israeli security forces who were guarding the light rail station in the French Hill neighborhood noticed the man who was acting suspiciously. When they searched him, they discovered the knife and took him in for questioning without incident. The man was said to be a 28-year-old resident of East Jerusalem's Shoafat refugee camp. Israel's security agency, the Shin Bet, announced today the arrests of eight Palestinians from the West Bank and East Jerusalem suspected of being involved in planning terror attacks in Israel and the West Bank. The arrests took place in a joint operation together with the IDF and Israel police, which was cleared for publication today. Syria yesterday issued a warning to Israel after Israel retaliated for a mortar shell that was fired from Syria into the Israeli side of the Golan Heights. As we reported to you, the IDF hit Syrian artillery targets in response to the mortar shell, which was thought to be a result of spillover from the fighting in Syria. With the IDF stating that regardless of the intent, Israel held the Syrian regime responsible for such incidents. Later yesterday, according to Syrian media, the country's general command warned, quote, against the repercussions of repeating such an attack. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu met today with visiting Russian Prime Minister Dmitry Medvedev. The two held a press conference in Jerusalem where both leaders spoke of the common challenges their countries face like the war on radical Islamic terror and the threat of a nuclear Iran. The visit also comes as Moscow and Jerusalem mark 25 years since the restoration of diplomatic relations. Holocaust historian and author Professor Yaffa Eliach has died. Eliach, a survivor of the Holocaust herself from Lithuania, opened the Center for Holocaust Studies in Brooklyn in 1974, the first such center in the U.S. She also created the dramatic Tower of Faces exhibit for the U.S. Holocaust Memorial Museum in Washington. Eliach taught Jewish studies at Brooklyn College and published several books about the Holocaust. She died Tuesday at the age of 79 and is survived by her husband, children, and grandchildren. Vice President Joe Biden and actor, director, and philanthropist Kirk Douglas were honored last night by the World Jewish Congress in New York City for their contributions to the well-being of Israel and the Jewish people. Biden was given the WJC's Theodore Herzl Award and spoke of his commitment to fighting anti-Semitism, the BDS movement, and his support for the state of Israel. Douglas was awarded the inaugural Teddy Kollek Award for the advancement of Jewish culture. His son, actor Michael Douglas, accepted the award on his father's behalf and said it was a very early present for Kirk Douglas's upcoming 100th birthday. While well, another Israeli television drama has made its way to the U.S., Netflix has purchased Fauda, a TV series about an elite IDF unit in pursuit of a Hamas leader. It will be broadcast in its original Hebrew and Arabic. Last week, Netflix purchased Mossad 101, which portrays a fictional preparatory course of Israel's security agency. And nominations are now open for the Helen Diller Tikkun Olam Awards, which recognizes Jewish teenagers making an effort to repair the world. Fifteen Jewish teens will be recognized with the $36,000 prize for exceptional leadership and engagement in service projects to make the world a better place.
Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Thursday, November the 10th at 7 o'clock, it's Talmud Study with Rabbi Mordechai Becker. At 7.30, a look at Muslim-Jewish relations in Europe from the AJC Global Conference. At 8, Cornell Professor of Judeo-Islamic Studies Dr. Ross Brand discusses the close relationship between Jews and Muslims in the early Islamic caliphates in a program of the Center for Jewish History. At 9, it's part one of a special L'Chaim panel discussion on the 2016 election results, hosted by Mark Golub with Stephen Baim of the AJC, NYU professor Thane Rosenbaum, Kenneth Bob of Amenu, and journalist Barbara Fix. Part two on the implications for the State of Israel as a result of the elections will air this Sunday at noon and 6 p.m. and Monday at 3 p.m. And tonight, later at 10 o'clock, musician Marika Hughes and writer-photographer Julian Voloj discuss their multicultural upbringings and their Jewish identity with Sandy Browarski from a New York Jewish Week program at Congregation B'nai Jeshurun in New York City. And coming up right after this newscast tonight at 6.30, a look at the first ever Aliyah Day held in Israel as I sit in for Mark Golub on tonight's In the News with Mark Rosenberg of Nefesh B'Nefesh. And that's the JBS News Update for Thursday, November the 10th, 2016. I'm Tisha Bader.